Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin, and today I want to talk to you about uh, a couple of dimes. I'm dropping dimes today, and also uh, just doing some research, and just want to talk about when you get into an area where you collect something or start collect something new, and you don't really know what it is. There's different steps you can take to learn as you go, and so this is kind of fun. Uh, you know, I don't know a lot of people who collect bust dimes. The earlier dimes is 1814. And you can see it's strong on one side and weak on the other there off to the side. And you've got uh, a lot of wear, of course, on the back of this coin. And then on this one here, we've got an 1835. Now, one of the things is, of course, you'll notice all the green on there. That uh, needs to come off. And so uh, I am in the camp where you absolutely do conserve coins or preserve them you know this is the type of thing that needs to be removed it can be removed safely and you want to do that for the uh, hobby I mean you want to be able to keep that coin um, in nice condition for future generations so but uh, when I say you got to conserve it nicely you got to do it the right way um, you know you can't just be messing around with it so one of the things is that uh, you know if you're learning a new series go ahead and start with the red book and uh, capped bust 1809 to 1837. There's some interesting notes in here. Uh, of course, uh, they went uh, from 2,000, uh, 2.7 grams, and then they switched to 2.67 grams after 1837, and they were actually 0.8924 silver, and they switched to 900 fine, which is really a wild, some wild numbers. Also, you'll notice that the diameter from 1809 to 1827 is, they use the term approximately, which I love because that tells you that there was a consistency issue, 18.8 millimeters, and then the later ones are 18.5 millimeters. And they all have the readed edge and were printed at the Philadelphia Philadelphia Mint. And of course, at 1814, they'll show you, look, these mintages are pretty low. And then they have um, 400,000. They have a small date and a large date, so we got to see which one we have. And they don't seem to vary too much in price, but then they have the States of America. Okay, well, let's take a look first and see if we can identify whether this is the large date or the small date. Uh, it looks pretty obvious as far as I can tell on these guys that uh, there's difference in size on those pictures. This is, I think, definitely the large date coin, just looking at just looking at the photos. Right, well, the next thing you want to find out is, okay, well, I found this thing that says States of America. What in the what is that? So, okay, red book, give me a picture. Give me a picture. Give me a picture. No picture. Okay, so after that, I decided, well, I'm going to move on to my trusty Walter Breen's Encyclopedia of U.S. Coins because, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a good book to use when you're trying to identify coins, right? So I open it up. Of course, we get to the 1814, and we've got a large date. Uh, same, but States of America, one word, scarce. And you'll notice that uh, it, it would indicate here that it looks like the uh, States of America ones are on the large date ones, not on the small date ones, if I read that right. Uh, let me see. And then again, 1820, they have the States of America. Uh, it looks like that was probably one reverse style that they used and um, before it got corrected. Okay. Ah, this that photo looks to have it. Look at that. States of America. See how, see how it's a run-on sentence right there? And then if you look at the next one down here, you've got a little bit of gap there in the States of America. But if that's not good enough for you, the next thing that I did look into was I just wanted to find uh, a, a better photo, a more modern photo. And so what I did from that point is I actually just looked onto uh, Heritage's website and found, found a coin that had the States of America all run together. So, of course, if you're not sure, then the next thing you got to do is find one that's uh, just a normal one that doesn't say States of America on it. But uh, we shall see. What do we think on this coin, guys? What do we think on this coin? We think that there's wear right where we want there to not be wear, so it's hard to tell. And it may take some more research. Um, there's some other diagnostics I think I'm going to look at here. I'm going to look closer and see if there's anything wonky about that. A, looking sideways. Um, it appears to me to be the run-on type. 
I mean, it doesn't look like there's a lot of clarity. I'm going to go ahead and grab the other one and see, you know, kind of feel for that gap. Of course, the stylization was a little bit different on the later dates anyways, because you can see how much different that A looks, except I'm having a hard time because I'm holding too many things at one time there. Sorry about that. So I think that might be the run-on type, which would be pretty wild. I mean, that's a that's a variety I'm not not familiar with. I always like learning something new. The, the other thing I want to show you here, we'll see if we can get this, is this 1814 is three-tenths of a millimeter larger. I feel like I'm doing an eclipse, a total eclipse of the coin right here. And uh, it's really, really hard to tell just from this. But when I have them in my hands together, I can tell that the 1814 is physically larger than that 1835. So, and then you get to the 1835 issue. You know, if we look, that's kind of at the tail end of the series for the dimes. It is one of the last years, 1.4 million made. They're not showing any major varieties, which doesn't mean there aren't varieties. It just means, you know, there's certain varieties that people like to collect and find. And the Red Book will usually list those. So, but some of these other ones, they don't list quite as frequently. So, but uh, this, is, this is pretty cool. I think this is the run-on type of the States of America. And that's a fun little find. Also, there's some green stuff on the back of this coin that needs to be taken care of, right? Be made, be made not green again. So, all right, guys, kind of fun stuff. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Ben the Coin Geek. You can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen. Thanks.